Hello, this is Eugene Blanchard, and I'm going to talk about some of the capabilities of Packet Tracer and connecting to it to the real world. What we're going to do is we're going to create a web server on uh, in Packet Tracer that we're going to be able to access through our my desktop web browser. The very first thing I do is I'm going to go and bring up the uh, single board computer, the SBC, and that's the one we're going to start with. So I got the SBC open and uh, click on it here and there's a tab called Programming. Open up Programming and by default it has a program called Blink here. I don't want the Blink so I'm going to delete it. It's gone. And I'm going to create a new one. You can have multiple programs here. I just want a clean slate. So go to New, give it a project name, HTTP Server. And then under a template they have all these different templates here. And the ones we're interested in are called the real ones. So these are ones to connect with the uh, real world. So we'll go real HTTP server, uh, JavaScript. You have a choice of JavaScript or Python. Uh, what I found, it doesn't seem to matter too much. It's just, you know, if you're familiar with JavaScript, go to Java. Or familiar with Python, I've tried them both. And that's, so I'm going to just take JavaScript. And then I'll create. So it's created the HTTP server JavaScript. Um, here's the main program where it is, and there's two dots. So if you go back to two dots, this gives a list of all the programs that you can run. We'll clip on, click on it, and we we'll go to main. And here's our main JavaScript. Right um, now, I'm not proficient in programming. I'm a, sort of one that can kind of muddle around and modify and uh, get things working. So we're going to take a look at it. So here's uh, different functions on posts. So if you're going to do a post, if you're going to do a get, these are different um, um, ways of accessing files with a web server, right? Doing posts and gets. And that, if we scroll down, um, there's a file request on files. And then there's the one we want called function setup. So function setup, what it has is you have a uh, uh, your server, and you have your server start, and this number here, 8765, that is the uh, uh, port that we're going to access this server on. So let's just scroll down a little bit farther here. And right here, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see the code better, is we have what's called server route. And what this means, if you um, are accessing the web server from browser and you have slash example slash contacts that would be the um, directory you're looking for your web server on the port 8765 uh, slash contacts it will operate this routine this subroutine called server dot on under contacts so we'll come up here and we'll say when it sees slash contacts as part of the URL it runs this little routine. It's going to do this information and it's going to reply with reached contacts. Okay, so now we know what's what's going to happen here. So what I'm going to do now is run this thing. So there's a button up here called run. So it's running and what it asks you, it asks you for permission to start the HTTP server on port 8765. Do you want to allow it? Yes, that's what we want to do. So now it's running. So let's bring up a a web browser. So on my web browser, so I'm going to put in 127.0.0.1 on port 8765. And then what I want to do is look at contacts. So let's see what happens here. So a couple things have happened. Let's take a look uh, here. What it did is I went to the local host address, port 8765, which is what our uh, uh, web server is listening to. So we went to slash contacts. It said run this subroutine or routine on server underscore contacts. It says when it gets that, we're going to print C dash URL. And this is what we had here, C dash URL. And what was the URL? Slash contacts. And what the IP was is 127.0.0.1. So it looks like this is the uh, um, IP version 6 address and then the IP version 4 address. Right? Then what it says is reply 
with reached contacts. So over here it replied with reached contacts. Right? Now, whenever I write code, uh, what I find is I, uh, I don't like letters like C and that. So I'm going to change it to connected via, or I spell via right, via URL. Right? So that way when we get an error message here, we know exactly what this C means here. Um, so I'm going to go up here and it says it failed the URL fav uh, your favorite icon dot icon from this IP. So function on files, right? So it couldn't pick up a file. It says fail, F for fail. So let's just say fail. Right? So make some changes here. Um, some of the other things I can do is just for, I don't like 8765, it's not a, you know, it's sort of not a valid web thing, so I'm going to call it 8002, right? Or I said, let's say 8008, right? We often see that as a web server. Um, anything else we can do? Well, over here, there's a typo, it says G capital, that's it. All right, I can put get lowercase. I like to fix things like that. All right, so what we I've made some changes, so I'm going to stop, uh, run it again. It's asking me, do you want to allow it to run on this new one here? Uh, it says running over here, starting the web server, which I did. It's now running, um, and that running comes from, let's see if I can find it here. Here it is. This is the running code here. That's where that's coming from, reporting back, logging it. And now I can go to my web browser again. And this time what I'm going to do is 8008. I've been playing around with this too much. Let's try that again. So there we go. 8008 contacts reach contacts. So I can change it to this. Now I use the local host, but you can actually use your IP address. My IP address is 192.168.1.69, and that's totally by coincidence. Uh, I didn't set it to, it was just picked it up on uh, DACP. And it comes up, reach the contacts. Uh, we can take a look over here, and we will say, see that it connected via URL, contacts, IP, originally on our local host. And then it connected via the URL slash contacts with the IP address of 192.168.1.69. And it's still failing on the favcon. Here, I'm not sure why, where that's coming from. Let's create another directory. Because I'm going to copy this contacts, since we know it works. And so I did a copy, paste. Right, so now it's contacts. I'm going to make a hello world. So I'm going to say, uh, hello, keep it easy. So when we see a uh, URL ending with slash hello, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to our hello um, service up here that we haven't created yet. So now I'm going to go and take a look at my server on contacts. Let's just... Uh, copy this part here. There we go. So I got two service on contacts. So this one I'm going to call hello. And uh, connected via URL. Right? And instead of my reply, I'm going to type in here hello world. Okay. So service on. So I'm going to stop it, run it again. And it's going to ask again, do you want to start the server on 8008? I'll say, sure, why not? And let's bring up uh, here. So it's running my server. I'll bring up my web browser. On my web browser, instead of contacts, I'm going to say uh, let's try this one more time. There we go. Hello world. Seems it takes sometimes a little while before um, it connects up. So here's my message, hello world, right, on my server 192.168.1.69 that I'm accessing from uh, my Opera web browser, right? 
and over here it says it's connected via URL slash hello IP and that uh, so that's pretty simple hello world but I'd like to put some more code in there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up some code that I wrote earlier uh, this is typical a very simple HTML static pray I got my HTML my head my title hello world title that should appear up here um, I'm going to have a body that says hello world and uh, h1 font big bold and then I put some uh, just random tasks in here it's called lorem ipsum uh, text and my body and my HTML so I'm going to do this I'm going to just literally paste it in between the exclamation marks here and we have it in here and we seem to have a lot of errors here it says unclosed strings so what we find is we can't have we have to have everything on one line there is a limitation here right my reply is going to send this code okay so we will stop it uh, we'll start running it says yeah you want to run on port 8008 I sure do and now I come over here to my SBC one so I can see what's going on here it's running I'll bring up my web browser and on my web browser I will refresh here there we go and now what we have is our hello world we have our hello world title and we have our hello world and we have our Lauren Epson filler here so we can create uh, web pages like that right and we do have our limitations now one of the things with the uh, SB uh, single board computer is it um, it doesn't have a file system right so I was thinking, well, why don't I use something that has a web browser already built in and does have a file system? So what I've done is I've taken up the web server. I've gone through the same process, modified the code here. And I think the web server would be better to use because it basically already has a file system in. Right? I can go to my web browser and I'll open up another one here and I'll put in... Uh, 192.168.169 so the port number I used on that one was 8001 and there we go so hello world server 0 it says hello world title again and our lorem epson data right so this is interesting is that you can now access in this case web servers from the real world into packet tracer now let's take a look at some of the options here so I can create a new Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to go up here. I'm going to create a new project and I can look at the different templates. And so some of the things that we can do is we want we're interested in anything that says real. We can have a real HTTP client so we can actually access external web servers within Packet Tracer. Uh, we did our real HTTP server. We can have real TCP clients, real TCP servers. WebSock clients, WebSocket servers, real UDP sockets, right? And you can create a desktop app. Um, this is a little bit beyond my capability. I will put a link where a YouTuber basically created a real TCP client and then connected to a TCP server, right? And, that, and so with this, you can build up um, services that could access the outside world. All right, so that's basically uh, what I wanted to show you is that you can create access packet tracer from the real world using the uh, Java and the Python scripts that are available to you. All right, thank you very much.